welcome to the R video tutorial on acceptance, rejection, sampling in R part one. Now, if you don't know what acceptance and rejection sampling is, you might want to watch the video that is in the description below before you watch this because it assumes that you understand how rejection sampling or acceptance rejection sampling works. If you don't know that, this is going to be difficult to watch. All right, so what we're going to do is the F distribution, a very simple distribution that's already programmed in R. We'll talk about how to do more complicated ones in another video, but right now we're going to stick with the F distribution. And we're going to use the degrees of freedom in the numerator of 3 and the degrees of freedom oop, in the denominator of 20. I've already set this up to make a picture. So I've got a sequence that goes from, oh, got a space in here, got to take it out, 0. 0.0001 to 10. Now, the reason it starts at 0. 0.0001 is the F distribution is only defined on positive numbers. If you put a number in it that is 0, it will blow up and give you an infinity and just generally bad things happen and we don't want that all right so i've got this gridded off by 0.0001 i'm going to use the df function which is the f distribution I'm going to plug in this sequence the degrees of freedom in the numerator is three the degrees of freedom in the denominator is 20 and then i'm just going to plot it with type equals l and we should get a picture here we get a picture and we can see that we have to choose an upper and lower bound. Clearly the lower bound is going to be zero. We don't ever want to go and hit zero. What is the upper bound going to be? Because after a while, it looks like most of the density where it's likely to be kind of tails off down to about nothing. So if I chose my upper and lower bounds at zero and let's say eight, that's going to give me something that's really close to an F distribution because it's extremely unlikely to be above 8. I could choose 10, and you can try it and see how close it comes out later on your own. But let's do this. So I need an upper bound and a lower bound. So I'm going to use UL1 as my upper bound, which I said I was going to use 8. And then I'm going to use my uh, lower limit, and I said it was going to be 0. So these are my upper and lower bounds. Put a comment in here, upper and lower bounds. And if you remember, the reason we need this is we need to first get, generate a candidate value. Okay, so and how do we generate that candidate value? We use a uniform distribution across here. But the other thing I need to get is the maximum value out of this. So, and that's the other reason I use this technique up here because I want to get a value that's above the density, but as close to the density as possible. And the maximum actually just barely touches it. So that's the reason I'm using it. Use the maximum function. And then y1 is what we're interested in. And I'll put these on the picture here in just a second. And now I've calculated this. And you can see the value down here. It's 0 0.709722, whatever. You would never guess that number. So find m. If you don't know what m is, again, go watch the previous video so you can understand what these are. I'm going to apply these to my picture here. So I'm just going to put an AB line in at, is it going to be a vertical one at uh, my lower limit? And I'm going to color it, I don't know, red. And uh, let's see, I will choose to do L type equals two. And the reason I'm putting these in is not to be difficult. I'm trying to educate you and get you to remember how to do things in R. So if you see me repeat ideas lots of times, that's why. I'm trying to get you to learn how to use R. And if you keep seeing the same idea over and over again, it'll stick in your mind better. So I'm going to call it this red again. LTY equals 2. And I'm going to also do an AB line. And it'll be horizontal, so I'm going to do H equals M1. And I'm going to do the color equals blue, just for fun. And the LTY equals 3. Okay, just so we have a visual on these. So I'm going to put in here, add some lines. For reference. And if I add the lines on there, you will see them pop up. And... Let's see, it did not, oh yeah, I didn't run my other ones. That's why it didn't like me. Be sure to run everything. Okay, so now you can see it's going to randomly sample across here, and then we're going to check it against that upper bound. All right, so let's get our candidate. So I'm going to call uh, the candidate here, X star, 
because it's our candidate. We don't know whether we're going to keep it or not. And it's going to come from a uniform. We're going to generate, oh wait, it's our unif. We're going to generate one of them. We only need one. The minimum value is lower limit one and the upper limit is UL one. It's going to give us a value and we'll look at it and see what it is real quick. And you can see it's 5.602. Uh, that doesn't look very likely. But we'll see whether we keep it or not. Remember, it's not for us to think whether we keep. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is evaluate X star. So here I actually have my function. So I'm going to, let's call this uh, Y star 1. And we're going to evaluate it. We have DF, which is our density we're going to put in x star one and our degrees of freedom are three and twenty okay remember we're sampling from a distribution we know that's why we actually know these values we're trying to pick from something that we do know so if i run this i can see what y star is and this would also be f of x uh, from the previous video okay so you can see the likelihood of this is really really low but we can reevaluate the ratio And that is Y star 1 divided by our M1. Simple ratio. And I'm going to call this R1. And we'll see what this number is. And then we'll just apply a rule here in just a second. So let's see here. Oh, decide whether to reject or accept. So I'm going to need a uniform on this one. So I'm going to call it U1. It's going to be, again, an R unif. But here it's just going to be 1, 0, 1. And we're going to use this R here that we've come up with. And basically we're going to say if this uniform is less than R1, then we keep it. If U1 is less than R1, then accept the sample. Otherwise, reject it. And we may do this a few times just to see which ones we keep and reject because I'm pretty sure this one's not going to keep. But I don't know because, remember, it's random. So I'm just going to do a little thing here and just put here if, just for an if statement, u1 is less than r1, then do something. So I'm going to just do a print statement. And I'm going to say keep. That was our criteria. And then I'm going to do else. And let me put my braces on here and then print. You can see I can't type at all. Reject. And maybe we should call this, instead of keep, we'll say accept. And this will tell us what to do. And we can evaluate it. So we know what uh, R is. It's 0 0.006. Let's see what U is going to be. If we look down here, it's going to be 0.632. That's way bigger than R. But anyway, we'll run our little logic here. And it says to reject. So I don't keep this value. So this is why it becomes inefficient. But what I can do is keep doing this over and over and over until I get one that it accepts. So reject that one, whatever it was. Reject that one, whatever it was. Uh, it, this one was 637. You can see the value down here. Maybe I should print it. But uh, So I could do this. Reject. And then I think I can just put in here X star one and then maybe it'll put that in there as well maybe not might yell at me i might need to use a paste statement but i don't know until i try it and part of programming is not knowing until you try it so let's give this a go well it didn't print it so that's not good so anyway we will just that one rejected i'll take this out for the moment we'll do it in the next one all right, run it again until we get one that we actually keep. Reject, reject. Oh, wait, we got one that we accepted. What was the value of it? It's 0 0.8379. So it's pretty far down here We're in the area that's really likely. And that's the idea of re acceptance rejection sampling. It's only going to accept ones where it's really likely, but sometimes it'll accept ones that are farther out. So... If it's really likely, it'll really likely to accept it. If it's really unlikely, it's probably not going to accept it. And here we have bad efficiency because you can see all of the region where this acceptance would be really, really low. All right, so this gives us the framework to go and jump to the next video.
All right, so see you there.